Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, Emmanuel. What a blessing the Lord has brought us to the close of another year and on the cusp of the beginning of a new year. He has brought us through a pandemic. We are blessed to be alive and to be here, to be able to worship him. And this is our first virtual communion service. We haven't been able to have it to come together but we have decided as we've read and studied and prayed that we're gonna have a virtual service, brothers and sisters, our first one. And so we wanna share with you briefly how to be prepared for that service because you need to prepare ahead of time. Can't wait till that day uh, to be ready for the service. So we're gonna give you some brief instructions and we want as many of you as possible to participate. Uh, members of your family, uh, even your neighbors. And of course, they will be in their own homes. We don't want to break physical distancing or social distancing, as it is called. But if you have friends, neighbors, families uh, who are Christians, who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you can invite them to participate and share the Zoom link with them. We want to create an atmosphere that's appropriate in our homes for this serious and solemn service and yet it is also a time of rejoicing, a time when solemnity and rejoicing uh, come together. And uh, also we wanna talk a little bit about the self-preparation uh, and the purpose for this service, which is to make a moving experience for all of us, something that refreshes us and strengthens us and confirms our faith in the Lord. And so for that preparation, um, we are going to have the uh, ordinance of humility, the washing of our feet, uh, serving one another in washing of the feet. That's a part of the service. Now, there may be some of you who may say, well, I have no one here at home to wash my feet and no one whose feet I can wash. Well, in that case, we still want you to participate in partaking of the Lord's Supper. The Lord understands if there's no one there to serve you and no one that you can serve. Uh, he doesn't want to uh, uh, eliminate you or prohibit you from participating in the service. We are in unusual circumstances and trust me, I believe and I think the scripture tells us that the Lord understands. And so as part of that preparation though, for those who can, and we hope, hope most of you can, for those who can, uh, participate in the ordinance of humility. You want to have uh, the warm water in a basin prepared ahead of time with towels available nearby. Uh, we also want to have uh, the bread available on a plate uh, properly prepared. And uh, we also want to have the grape juice, of course. And we're going to tell you a little bit more about that. But the grape juice uh, in a glass uh, prepared nearby. Now for the foot washing and the ordinance of humility, um, it'll take place right at the beginning of our service. After the opening prayer, there will be music. And during that time of about five minutes or so, if you've prepared, we want you during that time to wash one another's feet, to wash family members, feet. Uh, and then after that, we will go into the service. Now, the preparation for the service, you need to have unleavened bread. I mean, bread that does not have leaven in it. And for that, you can use uh, matzah, which you can purchase at a store. If there's a Jewish section, a Hebrew section, they will have various kinds of matzah. They may have Manashevitz matzah, they may have Yehuda matzah, matzah, and there may be other kinds, but it's simply an unleavened bread. It's like a cracker, and you would break it up uh, for the uh, communion service. Or you can prepare your own unleavened bread. It's composed of a whole wheat, of water, of uh, olive oil, and of salt. And we'll be making that, or we have made, and we'll make that, uh, recipe available. You bake it in the oven about 10, no more than 15 minutes at about 400. 
easy to make. And it makes a beautiful, uh, delicious uh, communion bread. And of course, the grape juice, you want to get 100% pure grape juice, uh, preferably a kosher grape juice, I would suggest. So you can get Welch's, you can get Manischewitz, you can get Kadim. There are several that you can get at your store. And if you have any difficulty finding them, just ask uh, one of the clerks or one of the persons working there. They'll be glad to help you. Then finally, we remember that this service, the focus of this service, is on the gift of God, which is the gift of eternal life, which is the gift of the Father, by the Father of his Son, Jesus Christ, to the world, to the world. And as believers, we are among those who have accepted this gift, this gift of God's Son, and this relationship with him, and this love that Jesus Christ has for us, and that we have and are developing even more deeply for him. And so I want our focus to be on the cross, to be on Calvary, to be on that great sacrifice, to be on the events in the upper room that evening. And uh, we look back, we also remember that this also uh, symbolized the deliverance of God's people out of Egypt, which means our deliverance from sin. And then, of course, Christ pointed us forward, reminding us that he would not partake of it again until he did it anew with us in the kingdom of God, in heaven, in the new Jerusalem. And so we also look forward to the second coming as we partake of this communion service. Finally, we're going into a new year. We're doing this on the eve of a new year, according to the Gregorian calendar, which most people follow uh, in the world today. And so as we go into this new year, we celebrate the fact that we're not going alone, that the sovereign Lord of time and of space and of the universe, the one who poured out his life for us, Jesus the Christ, Yeshua, the Son of God, is going not just before us, but he is with us, shepherding us, guiding us. And we want others to know that good news. That's what the gospel is all about. So that will be our communion service. Again, we want to encourage you to plan to participate as well as your families. God bless you. We love you. And uh, we just give God the praise for you, for your families and for what he's done for all of us in this year. In spite of the challenges, in spite of the trials, many of us have lost loved ones, but God is still good and he's still able and Jesus will fix it. God bless you.